In this video, I'm gonna go through the exact steps on how you would undervolt your GPU, but sort of for those of you who are like, what, what is undervolting? I better explain uh, what that is or sort of why we would do that in the first place. So why undervolt? And uh, basically, you know, I guess there are multiple reasons, but what it really boils down to, in my opinion, is that you'll have sort of much, and I guess much should be in parentheses, uh, much better temperatures. So, so I guess this depends on your specific card and sort of the, the silicon lottery, but in general, you will have much better temperatures. And, uh, and you know, so why would you want better temperatures, I guess? You know, it's better, so the card will have a better longevity. And I guess for the case of, you know, laptops and stuff, you will have better, better battery and stuff like that. And uh, I guess the second point is that you'll have... Uh, better uh, performance and so I mean this is kind of a counterintuitive thing but in in many cases when you if you run into very hot temperatures then the card will thermal throttle and so it will decrease the clock speeds of the card and then it will lower the performance but if you sort of prevent it from thermal throttling because you'll have better temperatures then you'll have better performance so i guess this is kind of counterintuitive but that's you know in many cases what you can observe so to me uh, undervolting seems to be a pretty clear thing to do um especially if you care about the temperatures of the card and uh yeah i mean i haven't i can't see any um any drawbacks or any negatives of doing it uh, it won't hurt the card. Uh, in fact, you know, you can argue that it's going to be better for the card running at lower um, lower voltages and then uh, sort of um, decreased temperatures, right? So before we go through the exact steps, let me sort of bring out the terminology. So what is undervolting? Uh, well, undervolting is, uh, I guess, sort of decreasing voltage, but maintaining clock speed. So maintaining maintaining clock speed so uh, basically you know you'll you'll still have the same performance but you'll try to decrease the voltage that the card receives um, so you know in other words you'll basically uh, have lower power consumption but you'll uh, have the same performance uh, underclocking on the other hand is decreasing you know uh, the clock speed so it's you know flat out reducing the performance of the card uh, in many cases, you can do a combination of these, right? You can undervolt, uh, you can decrease the voltage, and you can decrease the clock speeds. Um, and it, that kind of depends on, you know, how what your temperatures are. Uh, maybe you want to reduce fan noise or something like that. Uh, but yeah, those are sort of the two things that is important to keep in mind. All right, so now that we understand that, let's go through the steps. So what are the steps that we need to do to undervolt a card? Uh, so the first uh, is to run, uh, I guess, install and run uh, MSI Afterburner. So uh, there's going to be a link in the description where you can download that. But when you have downloaded it, it's going to look like this. So basically, you can see some information like the clock speed, the current clock speed. You can see sort of uh, power limits, temperature limits before it starts thermal, thermal throttling. And then you have the core clock, uh, the, uh, the clock speed, sort of um, basically if you want to overclock or underclock, and then the memory clock, and then the fan speed. And then here you can also see the temperature. But what we're going to go through and look at in this video is uh, pressing this thing right here. So when you press this thing right here, this sort of graph is going to pop up. You can also do Control F if for some reason clicking there doesn't work. So what you will see here is sort of a frequency and voltage uh, curve, where Y is the uh, frequency curve and X axis is the voltage. So we're going to go through that a little bit more later on. But just install this for now. And then also install and run uh, Unigine Heaven Benchmark. There's going to be a link in the description for that as well. Um, basically, this is to sort of test the stability of your PC and basically check what the performance is. So yeah, when you've installed that, we're basically going to run it. So after we run this uh, unit ben benchmark, we're going to keep track of the or take note of the highest temperature and then also the uh, clock speed of the card. So those are sort of the two main things. 
and uh, then we can compare after the undervolt and before the undervolt. So yeah, let me just run this. All right, so basically, um, hopefully it won't lag too much because I'm recording at the same time. But basically, we're going to press this benchmark and then we'll have MSI Afterburner here. And the things we will look at is the core clock speed. So right now I can see that it's about around 1900. Um, you can also see it here. So it's about 1900 and it's running at a uh, over 1000 microvolt. But so uh, what we're looking for is basically what is the clock speed? So now it's decreasing a little bit. And what are the temperatures of the card? So one thing that's pretty interesting is that now it's over 80 degrees Celsius and you can sort of st start to see that the the frequency, the clock speed of the card is decreasing a little bit from what it was in the beginning. And this is a common thing that the clock speeds will decrease as your temperatures run hot. So now it's even clearer, it's 82 degrees and it's almost 1830 uh, megahertz, 1820. So, you know, it's almost 100 megahertz difference. And now it's actually thermal throttling pretty bad. So it's less than 1800 megahertz now, which is quite a big difference. All right. So after running the benchmark, the clock speeds. So let's see what were the clock speeds. So highest temperature was 82 degrees, which is just below um, the, the temperature for where you uh, sort of thermal throttle. And I think it was thermal throttling just a little bit because the, the megahertz or the clock speed of the car was decreasing quite a bit uh, but the clock speed of the card was um, around you know 1800 to maybe 1900 uh, I guess it you know it's not important to get the exact megahertz um, but let's just take 1850 that seems to be a, a nice number so that's the clock speed of the card and the highest temperature was 82 all right so when we've done that uh, we have something to refer to and something to compare to so uh, what we want to do now, this sort of these steps of undervolting. So we will start with the microvolt of 950 um, and we will maintain that 1850 clock speed and then uh, sort of decrease in increments of 25 microvolts. So, you know, we're going to go down to 925, 900, 875, etc. And we're basically going to see when does the computer crash or when does it crash. So when it crashes, uh, plus 25 microvolts to that uh, limit. And that's sort of the the microvolts that you'll use. Uh, and uh, in the beginning, I was kind of like, no, uh, if it's cra if it's going to crash, then it's going to, my computer is going to break. Uh, but that's not the case. There's nothing you know, that's inherently dangerous with the, the, the GPU crashing. Um, just it's going to restart and it's going to work again. So uh, no problem. Don't worry about it. So anyways, we're going to start with a microvolt of 950 and then we're going to decrease in increments of 25. So, you know, how do we do this? Well, we basically go to that thing right there or we, or control F. So we get this frequency, um, this voltage frequency curve. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on this, um, this uh, core clock speed and you're going to write minus 250 and then uh, you're going to press this button right here to apply it. So basically now we've underclocked the card, right? So now we've reduced the performance of the card. And the reason why we want to do this is because uh, we're basically going to take this 950 and then we're going to drag it up to, what was it, 1850. So you can press shift and then down arrow to go down to that exact number. So 1850 and then you're going to press uh, apply. Now over uh, that 950, they're all going to maintain the same clock speed, which is 1850 that we set it to. So don't bother about this at the end. Uh, you can, you, you can, I guess you can, you can push this down, but um, yeah, it, it doesn't matter really. It's never going to run at that microvolt anyways. But so, what you would do now is you would rerun the test. You would make sure that everything is working okay, so there's no crashes and stuff. And you know this is a pretty safe way, uh, sort of a, a microvolt to start with. So I think this is pretty guaranteed to run okay. And then you'll decrease it. So what you'll do then is you uh, press right here. You'll do zero, and then you press uh, no wait zero, and then you'll press 
apply. So basically now, and you will uh, you will go back to the same curve that you had in the beginning. You will do the same thing, minus 250, and then you will go to 925, and you'll do the same thing, 1850, and then OK, and then you'll uh, run the test. So it, it's a little bit tedious, but that this is a safe way to do it. Um, I've already tried this and checked it out. And so what my what mine is, is I'm going to do minus 250, and I'm going to go to 850, and I'm going to go to 1850. And I'm going to press apply. So this is a very safe one for me. I know that this works. So what I'm going to do is uh, just run the test at this clock speed and we're going to, or this uh, unrevolt, and we're going to see uh, what the performance is now. I guess also technically we are underclocking a little bit because the clock speed in the beginning was 1900, right? So I guess this is a combination. There's an undervolt and there's a slight um, underclock as well. But um, yeah, it's, it's very minor. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the test again and we're going to run it to see what we get. Oh, and also you should have also um, kept track of the, the score. I think I remember it to be 2004. Uh, we have it on video, but I think it was 2004. So just keep note of that because we're going to compare it to what we get now. So as you can see already, the temperature are, are much, much better, right? 71 degrees compared to 83 degrees that we got before. So interestingly, the score decreased a little bit. So after undervolt, uh, score 1983. And then um, the highest temperature was uh, 73 degrees. So uh, let's just bring out the calculator. So it's let me close this as well. So the, let's see, the difference is 1983 divided by 2004. So I guess it's a, um, about, you know, 1% worsening impro uh, improvement. So 1% performance uh, degradation. And I guess, I don't know, about 10 degrees uh, better temperature. So 10 degrees better temperature. And, you know, to me, that's a, that's an, a wonderful trade-off, you know, to have that much better temperatures and basically having it to the point of thermal throttling before, but now, um, it, you know, within very safe temperature. All right. So the test I did this on, by the way, was a GTX 1060. Um, and, uh, you know, I've done this on the other, so I have two GPUs, the other GPUs at RTX 3090. I've done the same thing on that one. And uh, it leads to similar performance benefit, uh, sort of uh, temperature benefits. Um, and it, it's um, a lot quieter as well, which is really nice. And hopefully uh, you now know exactly how you go about doing it. And uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching the video um, and uh, like the video if you thought it was useful and I'll see you next time.